Hey guys, welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we're gonna be covering the properties panel in the far right section over here in the window. Now, there's a lot of options to, uh, a lot of things to cover in this panel, so we're not gonna go over every single thing that you see, which is good because we'd probably be here for a long, long time if we did. Um, so let me first just remind you guys that each of these panels is gonna have this button here uh, that I mentioned in the first uh, panel over here in the info panel. Now it's the same in every single one of these. They're showing different panels, but you can always come in here and change that around. So uh, just be aware that's there and you can modify things. So let's get into it. The properties panel houses sub menus that you can see here, which are going to be useful in modifying your scenes in a lot of different ways. So uh, let's go through each of these panels and I'm gonna cover uh, briefly just some of the options that you see and what they're used for. So the first one you're gonna see by default is the render menu. Now this menu is shown by this little camera icon and uh, we're gonna cover rendering in this, uh, this course but it's gonna be the last section that we cover and it's gonna be done once we build our scene up from, uh, from, from the ground up and we've got something to actually render. So uh, if you come in here, you can see if we click this render button, it's going to render from the camera's view uh, whatever objects we have on our scene. So if you wanted to render something, you can always go there and click that. It's the exact same button that you saw in this render image uh, menu in the info panel that we discussed in the first uh, lecture. So um, if you had an animation instead, you'd click the animation button and it would render a sequence of images out for uh, you know anything that's animated in your scene. So those are two useful things to, uh, to know about. Now this option is going to allow you to um, tell Blender where you want to render the, uh, the scene to. So if you click image editor, when you hit render, the main 3D viewport is gonna switch the, uh, the view, the, uh, the image editor, and um, it's going to put your render there. If I had this changed to new window and I hit render, it's gonna pop up a new window for me and uh, kind of keep things more organized that way. So it all depends on how you want to uh, organize your scene and how you want to uh, create a workflow to, uh, to keep things moving smoothly. So uh, there's a lot of other options in here. You can change the size of your render, um, quality settings, things like that. And uh, of course, where you're gonna output your final image to. So when you hit render, it's just giving you a preview of what that looks like. And it is actually rendering this image to the uh, to the, uh, the computer, but it's not saving it anywhere. So if you wanna save it, you have to get an image and then save it somewhere. But if you wanna do this uh, with an animation, you would type in a directory here and uh, it, would, it would save all of those files or the movie file to that directory. So kind of useful. Um, and again, there's a lot of options in here to explore. So when you have time, when you get into rendering, definitely come in here and uh, check out the manual, check out the stuff online and find out what, uh, what all these things do. And uh, for the stuff that is very important, we're gonna be covering a lot of these things when we get to the render section in this course. Let's go over the second panel now. This panel is the render layers panel. So uh, as we're gonna be talking a little bit more about when we get into the render section, you can actually isolate specific things within the scene and then put them on separate render layers, which can be useful when you get into the compositing stage. Now we're not really gonna be covering compositing in this course, but um, for the sake of just brief explanation, let's say that you had uh, this cube here and then you had someone walking in front of the cube in the shot, or you wanted to make it look like somebody was walking in front of the cube in the shot. Uh, it might be helpful to have the cube on one layer and the person walking in front of it on another. That way when you go to combine these in your editor, you've got the option to turn things on and off, move them around, and uh, you don't have to come back to Blender and completely re-render scenes uh, over again because uh, it would be a big waste of time if somebody came in and said, hey, I want you to change where that cube is sitting. Well, if you had to come back and re-render that, it would, be a, it would be a waste of time and you might have to do that more than once. So render layers are really helpful for uh, splitting things up in that, that sense. This next panel is the scene menu. And uh, within here, you're gonna see options that uh, are relative to the scene itself within Blender. So you're gonna see things like units, which uh, refer to the scale that things are within Blender. And um, if you click in here, you can go from metric to imperial, which is inches or feet. 
um, and degrees and radians, things like that. This is the global scale of the scene. So right now you can see this little grid here. If I alter this value, it's gonna change how big or small that is relative to the objects within the scene, which is pretty handy. And uh, you know, again, a lot of other options in here that are relative to how we render, how we deal with gravity. So when we get into dealing with physics, things like that, that's gonna be handy. So um, some of the things, again, we may re, uh, revisit here, but a lot of the things uh, you may or may not use. So moving on, this is the world menu. And the world menu is gonna be important when we get into defining uh, how our 3D environment looks for our scene. So uh, you got things in here like exposure when we get a render, uh, the background color, which is right now set to this default gray, uh, types of lighting that we can use within the world environment, and uh, just other render settings that we can use, which will affect how things look. This is the, uh, the object menu, and it's going to affect some of the same things that we changed when we were using the menu over here. So uh, you can change these settings here, and it will change the location of an object you have selected. You can also go in here and do a lot of the things we'll discuss later, such as moving it to a different layer. You can uh, lock these values so that no one can come in and edit them group things together and then do things like display uh, wireframe on top of an object put the name of the object on the object itself so that might be handy for something and uh, different things like that so uh, just be aware that you can come in here and edit things about objects within your scene in uh, this menu this is the constraints menu it's not something i'm really going to cover a lot right now because it's uh, mostly related to and relative to uh, animation practices so because we're not really gonna be covering animation in this course, not a lot of it is relative, relevant to uh, what we're gonna be covering in terms of building the scene, but uh, be aware that if you are going to get into animation, you might wanna come in here and explore the constraint menu and uh, start to understand what these things can be used for, how you can apply them to your objects, and uh, specifically what each of them do in order to uh, change the behavior of one object compared to another in the scene. This is the modifiers panel, and this panel is gonna be used quite extensively uh, when you get in and start modeling objects. So uh, you'll see if we drop down this, this modifier menu, you're gonna have four categories. You're gonna have modify, generate, deform, and simulate. And uh, primarily, if you're just working on 3D models, you're gonna be working on uh, changing the way those look through the generate and deform uh, panels here. So uh, we're gonna get into these a little more when we get into modeling. But uh, be aware that the modifier panel is a panel that you may end up using quite a lot. And uh, I definitely use it on a day-to-day -day basis. Moving on, this is the object's data menu. Now this menu can be a little confusing because there's an object menu over here and then they have an object data menu over here. Now they're not the same thing. This menu refers to uh, kind of the physical location and things like that of an object within a scene. And uh, this refers more to the actual pieces of an object itself and um, things that make up the object as a whole. So again, uh, we will probably come in here and talk a little bit more about some of these things when we get into texturing or uh, modifying parts of an object, but be aware that this is for stuff that's within an object and this is for the object as, as a whole. So uh, moving on, we're gonna cover this menu, which is the materials menu. So uh, it's not enough just to have a model and a scene that looks really good. Uh, when you go to render it, if you don't have any materials, it's just gonna look like a gray cube. <laughs> so uh, what you have to do is come in here and assign it materials, which is basically like painting the object or giving it a texture surface that uh, simulates a surface that you would have in real life. So just like in real life, objects in 3D have to be made up of something. They can't just be made up of clay. And uh, if you come in here, you can alter what the, the properties for those materials uh, look like. So if you want something that's very reflective, like a mirror finish, you can, uh, you can create that and um, change that here. And you can change things like specularity. Uh, you can change the color of an object here. And um, things like that, translucency, transparency, things like that. And uh, there's a lot of other options in here that we're definitely gonna be covering when we get into the texturing uh, section of this course. 
So um, you will spend a lot of time in this panel and it's, uh, it's very good for generating an overall uh, look and feel for an object. Closely related to this panel, but not the same thing, is the next panel, which is the, uh, the textures menu. Now this menu is, uh, it may be a little confusing if you're first starting out. Materials basically define uh, how light and the environment interact with uh, what's made up of the substance of an object here and how it, uh, things like light reflect and absorb um, within the, the surface of the object itself. So um, you can think of a mater material like uh, the paint of a car or the metal that makes up uh, a car itself. That, that would be considered a material. If you get into texture menu over here and you start looking at these texture options, textures are basically 2D um, just flat images. So you can load images in that you paint yourself or you can generate images like clouds here. And uh, textures are something you can think of using the car analogy, uh, something that's closely related to uh, like a decal that you would put on your car. So if you were gonna put a bumper sticker on your car, that would be a texture. Uh, if you were going to have a, a car that was nice and clean and then you were going to come in and create uh, dirt on it, you would probably put the dirt in a texture map that goes on top of the material. So uh, that's kind of the difference between those two. And again, we're going to be spending some more time in here when we uh, start going over textures and how they work. So uh, we will be revisiting this panel quite a bit. And uh, for now, let's move on to the particles menu. Now this menu is really interesting. If uh, you do get into animation or more visual effects things within Blender, uh, you might be using particles. So if you come in here and you create a new particle system, you can uh, start playing back in animation and you will see these particles being generated on the fly right here. Now uh, again, this is not something we're gonna really get, get into and cover in this course because it's more on the animation side of things. But be aware that if you wanna come in here and generate uh, anything that's closely related to a particle effect, such as uh, dust or uh, fire, things like that in a scene, you can come over here and start a, uh, generating particles. And uh, it's, it's a great way to get in here and uh, generate some natural elements that are found within the real world. And of course, the last menu is the physics menu. So if we uh, come in here, we can enable things like force fields, uh, cloth, dynamic paint, um, fluids and smoke, things like that. And uh, again, it will take some time to come in here and get to know and be familiar with what all these things are. But uh, again, for this course, we're gonna be sticking to the basics. So you're not gonna need to know uh, how to use these things. But be aware that if you do uh, get more advanced and you want to learn how to do uh, smoke, fire, things like that, um, along with the particle menu here, you will be using the uh, physics menu and it's gonna add a lot more realism to uh, your scene when you're doing things that are uh, related to natural phenomena in the real world. And uh, that's gonna cover everything in terms of these menus for the, uh, the properties panel. So I know it seems like a lot to remember, but you're gonna quickly learn to associate all of these icons with the functions within each of these menus. And uh, as you begin to use them, it's gonna get a lot easier to uh, remember what they're for, and uh, it's not gonna be as hard to, uh, to come in here and tweak all these settings. So one other thing to note is that the properties panel is gonna change depending on uh, what you have selected in the 3D viewport. So right now I've got a cube selected, and because of that, it's got these settings up here that are shown. And um, if I select the light instead, you're gonna see some of those options disappear and instead I have this additional menu here, which is the lamp menu. So if I go in here, I can tweak all of the settings for the current lamp that I've selected, and I can change the kind of lamp that it is. And uh, we'll be getting into more of how these settings work when we get into the lighting section, where we cover each one of these extensively. And uh, we'll be talking about how to light our scene really effectively and realistically using these lamp types. So guys, that's it. In the uh, next lecture, we're gonna be covering the object panel, which is the panel uh, that's uh, right here. Now, it's not always visible, but I'm gonna show you guys how to hide and unhide it, just like I did the, uh, the tool panel over here. So uh, that's what we're gonna be covering in the next lesson. I will see you there.